uh, in a word of prayer. Anyone who is comfortable to do so? Okay, how about uh, Prabhakar? Prabhakar, could you please lead us? Yes, Pastor, sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, acknowledge your holy name. Uh, at this very moment, Father, we are bringing everyone to your throne of grace, lead us and guide us, Father, in today's prophetic and end ministries. In this class, Father, uh, bless Pastor Nancy as well, Father. And also, we want your presence to be with us throughout the class so that we can learn the in-depth uh, insight which Holy Spirit wants to reveal this. Uh, let us gain <clears throat> wholesome knowledge in you, Father, and uh, let our hearts and minds shall be renewed in your word so that, Father, we can be equipped all the uh, good things um, as the servants of God, Father. Thank you so much uh, for this wonderful moment and wonderful opportunity again today. Uh, I dedicate uh, uh, again each and every one and I ask this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And thank you. Thank you, Prabhakar. Um, so we were studying about hearing from God and the human senses. Uh, more specifically, the senses of the human spirit that help us perceive uh, what the Holy Spirit is ministering to us. And we also saw how the Holy Spirit generally ministers to our spirit man. So it's a spirit to spirit communication that happens and, you know, we pick up information from there and then we apply that. So we will, uh, you know, continue from there. I just want to put for us that picture uh, or the diagram which I had shared the other day. Please give me a moment. Uh, ma'am, I think I think you are muted. Just yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that. Thank you so much for letting me know. So basically, I was uh, just going over what we had discussed in the last class and summarizing it for us. Uh, and I, I was just saying that uh, we have senses in our spirit man very similar to the senses of our outer man that is our body and we also said that the spirit probably has more senses that we don't know how to explain yet uh, and we saw how god ministers spirit to spirit so we receive the communication from the holy spirit in our human spirit and that is then uh, analyzed it is um, we're able to reason in our soulish realm and then we are able to determine the action that we have to take and uh, towards the end of last class you know i was also sharing with us that sometimes our physical senses can uh, 
be synced to our spiritual senses so you know if i'm feeling something in my spirit man that presence or you know that sensation can also be felt in the human body okay the uh, the human body or my physical eye can see something spiritual so you know sometimes that happens but uh, otherwise we must be prepared to pick up things in our spirit you know, we may not have a bodily sensation uh, every now and then but you know we, as long as we have become sensitive in our spirit we will still know what god is trying to tell us so uh, that is something that we saw in the last class and i also wanted to reiterate for us that the spirit and the word agree so when it comes to the prophetic you know people have this uh, confusion and they have a lot of worry because they feel that things will go wrong you know wrong instructions will uh, lead them into destruction so that is because uh, we don't fully rely on the word of god you know the word of god is very important for us to assess and analyze whether what we are hearing is truly from the spirit of god we see in 1 john 5 7 that the spirit and the word agree so they don't contradict each other and that is the reason you know even earlier in the previous chapter we said that uh, or uh, you know we when we studied about songs prophetic songs we said that it is important for one to be well versed in the word of god because then they are able to uh, uh, you know accurately accurately interpret what is being uh, communicated by god's spirit so that's a, a little bit of what we did in the last class and we will continue from there so as you go through the rest of this chapter in your notes i'm looking at the pdf version and i realized that you know the page numbers are different on your printed version uh, and the pdf version so pdf version uh, we completed page 143 and the rest of the chapter here uh, has many examples i shared a couple of examples about each of the senses you know the sense of feeling how one experiences fee uh, experiences peace or we had the example of being compelled in the spirit provoked in the spirit uh and we said the sense of seeing uh, as one is able to perceive either a simple picture uh, you know one solitary picture or you can have uh, something like a motion picture you know that uh, one sees then we also said uh yeah forward the sense of uh, uh, hearing uh, jesus usually you know he made the statement he who has ears let him hear whenever you read that you know you you probably have thought whenever you read that you thought every human being has ears what is jesus talking about he who has ears let him hear so that is referring to the spirit man and the sense of the sensitivity rather of the spirit man to pick up what god is saying so a sense of hearing Okay, it's a uh, very important, and we said how generally, you know, uh, minus the medium of sound, uh, we pick up words in our spirit. And the examples we talked of was, you know, Philip when he heard, "Okay, go overtake the chariot." Not necessarily a, a a voice speaking to him, but he got those words and he followed it. Similarly, you know, you have uh, uh, the instance of uh, Peter who hears from God to. go to cornelius's house and he actually goes and does that so this uh, is the manner in which we pick up then of course you know there is a taste uh, and uh, you know sense of uh, yeah taste and you know feeling so we see that our senses can pick up all these things and earlier we had a question you know some of us had this uh, uh, concern what if i pick up something uh like I'm, i have i think i have a word but what if it's not from god so you know it's it's all about training 
ourselves to training our senses in other words so uh, hebrews 5 13 and 14 i already shared that with our class where uh, we see that you know anyone who is mature uh, they actually are the ones who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so the more we uh, study god's word the more we uh, you know give time to the work of the spirit in our lives the sensitivity to what it is that the lord is saying increases and so uh, over time what happens is we can quite easily tell the difference between our thoughts and uh, what is really from the holy spirit so uh, there can be i mean you could look at it this way there can be three sources one can be our own thoughts one can be the holy spirit who is speaking to us and we also know that satan you know tries to influence our minds with his suggestions so we have to discern and see you know if i have a thought then who is this from you know is it my own god or uh, the enemy so by reason of use as i'm studying god's word renewing my mind and also depending on the holy spirit also the gifts of the spirit right we could we will be in a position to tell and as you practice you know you'll be able to do this much faster as compared to when you just start out uh Uh, you know acknowledging what the spirit of god is uh, speaking to us so it's a matter of training our senses okay so that's how we will be able to uh, uh, discern what really is from god and what is from us so a simple test that we generally uh, recommend is ask yourself the question uh, what was the first thing that came to me what was the very first thing that came to me so uh like when we are when we are praying and you know perceiving what the holy spirit is telling us you know uh maybe maybe we're praying for a friend and we have this thought that god is going to bless you with a, a, give you a financial blessing that's the word that i receive so when i want to share this word to the person you know i really have to try to share the first thing that came to my mind okay because generally it's the holy spirit now uh, human psychology yeah you know, what happens is when we dwell too much on it we are all capable of extrapolating things okay so uh maybe maybe the word that came to a, a particular person was uh that uh, god will bless so and so financially that's it now when i'm ministering that word if i'm not careful you know i might end up adding things to it you know god is going to bless you financially uh, through an investment that you recently made you see the additional part need not necessarily be from god okay. so we have the tendency to kind of add you know spice it up a little bit so which is what we want to avoid so a good practice is whenever we are going to prophesy ask yourself the question what is the very first thing that came to me and generally when we pick up something that uh, is out of the obvious you know we know that it's god you you're not even thinking about it and then boom there you have it you know you have uh, uh, like let's say you know you're you're just going about your daily life and then you get this word for someone you know that word is that okay that person will be going to a particular country you never even thought about it uh, and you cannot even you know come up with something like that and here you have it god is giving an instruction or god is uh, giving you a word for somebody else so generally when it when the word comes you know it you could say in sort of a sudden way the very first thing that comes to our mind uh, is from god and uh, we must learn to receive that and deliver it you know deliver it in the most simple way 
and when we keep practicing that over time you know, we will improve in the way we are hearing from god you know it, it tends to be really fast okay now uh, there can be certain things that hinder us from here uh, from uh, you know what god is ministering to our hearts and uh, these things are you know pastor shared a dream uh, which he had where he saw a lot of weeds in his ear and uh, that a big ear bud came and you know that ear bud helped clear the clog in the ear uh, and the interpretation that he received for this this particular dream was that you know, there are spiritual uh, uh, interruptions there are spiritual hindrances that block our sense of hearing from god now if we go back to you know uh, the passage where uh, jesus talks about the uh, the seed the sower sowing the seed and you know there are there are things that choke the growth of that seed what are those things you know we we know that there are the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches lust for other things there can be afflictions persecutions that also um, you know uh, hinder us from being very sensitive to god and uh, uh, you know many other things sin can uh, cause us to become hard you know towards the ministry of the spirit so all these things are a hindrance and we have to really guard our hearts against uh, these things and you know that will help us to be uh, sensitive and also you know uh, sometimes a hindrance is the fact that we want god to speak in the most spectacular way you know, we we expect okay god if you are going to speak to me there better be a thunder accompanying your word or there better be a lightning so if that's not the case then uh, i'm just going to um you know take it as god has not spoken to me but you know god does not necessarily speak in a spectacular way um uh, all the time maybe a couple of times we've had that experience where we shook and you know all that happened but we know that you know even at the time when elijah was uh, to hear the voice of god his voice was not in you know the the wind or uh, the earthquake or all those mighty mighty occurrences but his voice was a still small voice and elijah had to pick it up and in the same way uh, we have to be ready for the ordinary and not always expect the spectacular because when we do that we will miss out on the you know voice of the spirit that is ministering to us you know uh, uh, on on such a regular basis but when we get stuck up in the spectacular we we you know miss out on that opportunity so always be open always be open god can speak anyway god can um speak uh a, f- through the most ordinary uh, situation or the most unlikely individual you know uh, uh into our hearts so god can speak anyway so every day if i can maintain a sense that says okay god i know that you are a speaking god and i am ready to hear from you no matter how you speak to me and sometimes i've heard testimonies of people who have made some big decisions in their lives uh and the way that communication came to their hearts was you know, very simple you know they would say i just had peace to do this and i went and did it and it was so correct you know in line with what god wanted them to do you know they did not have to wait for you know some prophet to come and loudly tell them okay thus says the lord this is what you need to do so be sensitive and uh, be open to the ordinary not just the spectacular so from here we'll move on to uh, chapter 10 here which is about interpreting uh, personal prophecies so a couple of uh, uh, good Uh, instructions here that will again help us to perceive then interpret correctly present that word well so that it is applied in the lives of believers okay so uh as we study this particular uh, chapter we look at the prophetic process okay there are uh, several elements that are involved in the prophetic process so process is like you know you first hear from god 
and then the word is finally uh, passed on to the concerned person so what and all happens in that process so that is prophetic process so there are elements like revelation so first of all getting that word revelation presentation presentation is how do you want to communicate that word okay then interpretation we uh, we've already seen how there are symbols allegories puzzles riddles you know god speaks in those ways so uh, we can't obviously tell somebody you know like oh i i'm seeing musical notes and then the person be like uh, okay so like what what do you want me to do so it's only when we are able to interpret what we are seeing that it is useful for the listener so interpretation uh, and then you know of course application we're talking in the context of personal prophecy so once i once i have uh, you know done all this then i apply it how do i apply it the timing of application and confirmation of that prophecy so you know all these elements are part of the process now uh, coming to uh, the revelation the uh, origin of the prophecy now we know that the prophecy obviously comes from god the holy spirit uh, and so we have to pick it up and we've talked about the various senses that we have in the human spirit uh, so you know one can receive it from god uh, but the effort should always be to have uh, to know that this is from god so that confidence we need to have about the revelation Okay, so that's when we can minister that word to someone. Now, Jeremiah fourteen verse fourteen, uh, uh, it says, "And the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, a worthless thing, and the deceit of their heart." So you see there the origin of the prophetic word. has to be tested and god is not pleased with you know us presenting something uh, that is not from him as if it is from him and god uh, wonderfully warns his people in those uh, in the in the times where jeremiah lived there were prophets who were prophesying what deceit of their hearts and you see those strong words lies in my name so that is something that we don't want we have to make sure that the word we get is truly from god so uh, when it comes to the revelation assessing uh, whether this is from god you know we we really have to uh, become well versed at that okay so uh, yeah so i think we we get the uh, point there that we have to be clear about the revelation now presentation when it comes to presenting the word of god again uh, we have to be clear on what we share and how and also be conscious about how we share it so what we share must be accurate okay it must be accurate so then you know it will again depend upon uh, the uh, uh, the the senses you know, the way we have trained ourselves the knowledge of god's word and all of that uh, and you know so then we we know that okay this is truly from god it's accurate and then you know you go about either sharing it in uh, a simple way where you can just go and tell somebody that i have a word for you and you know just just go ahead and say that or you know you might Uh, you might want to uh, present it in different ways that i've already shared with us you know uh, uh, maybe you want to uh, it's uh, presented in a song or uh, you know something if it's in the workplace you want to present it as a suggestion so there are many different ways in which uh, the presentation can actually be made so one has to think about it and uh, one has to be careful to present it and again you know talking about the accuracy uh, we know that we hear in part okay so we have a tendency to give uh, somebody what they want all of us have that tendency uh, we we feel like okay i want to tell this person uh, something that you know they they should be thrilled about it you know they sh- they should know that god is speaking to them sometimes our intentions are very good uh, but you know 
what happens is we may have received just a small part of what God is saying and we end up adding our own parts. So in the presentation, we have to avoid it. And, you know, when you practice to release the prophetic word, uh, you could do this. You know? Okay, I'm just going to be true to that one part which I have picked up. Now, the person may want you and sometimes people also ask, you know, they say, um, okay, uh, is God telling you something? You might share about, you know, the financial blessing. But they'll ask, okay, is God also telling you uh, what I need to do with that money? And we may not have that communication from God. So uh, it, it's kind of best to say, okay, no, this is it. This is the part that I have. And uh, I don't know, like, I don't know about that. Uh, you pray about it. Okay. So uh, when it comes to presentation, you present the part that you are clear about don't don't worry too much about giving a you know a, a long description or a big instruction and things like that okay so if it is just a part that's fine you, know, you share that uh, okay now interpretation understanding the meaning uh, and testing the prophecy so Interpretation is very important uh, because God speaks to us in symbols, parables, riddles. We've seen that from the book of Hosea, Hosea 12, 10, where uh, uh, we, we have, you know, God giving the prophets multiplied visions, symbols, okay, and numbers 12, where we saw how, you know, God speaks with vision, dream, um, and also dark sayings. So now, how do we uh, go about interpreting it? You know, the best thing is to use the word of God as our uh, as our basis, okay, and that will help us. And also, uh, the spirit of God. You know, we are open to hearing from the spirit of God. So sometimes, in interpreting that word, we will need other gifts to be activated, like the word of knowledge, or the discerning of spirits, or the word of wisdom, because we might be looking at this image and thinking, okay, sometimes those images are not in the Bible even. So really have to depend on the the holy spirit to be able to interpret the uh, images so this is how we depend on god to interpret the image and uh, uh, when it comes to you know a certain certain communication from god let's say in our book there's a nice example let's say uh, you see a car now you don't see, there is no car in the bible Okay, there's no car in the Bible. Yes, there's transportation. Uh, so then, you know, one asks the question, okay, what is God trying to say? I see this car. Uh, is it uh, a message about general transportation that God is uh, speaking to me about? Or is it more specifically about a car? Okay, uh, a car. And uh, if it is about a car, uh, then does God want to give this person a car? Or... Uh, could it be that this person owns a car business or could it be that God is telling so-and-so to give their car to somebody or is this person a car mechanic of some sort or uh, could it be that there was a damage to the car or the car was lost, uh, you know. There, there are so many, so many things that one can interpret you know, from just, a, okay, you're seeing a car now, what to tell that person? The word, yes, the word is the best, uh, you know, the best thing that we rely on. Sometimes, however, we may not have that, pro that, that prophetic imagery in the Bible as such. Okay, so we depend on the Holy Spirit. And uh, surely enough, you know, again, when you begin to practice this, you will realize that uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, is able, we, we also have to hear from the Holy Spirit and then we are able to interpret what we are seeing and then we can, you know, tell that individual. Okay, so uh, interpret the uh, word that we are receiving. And once we have received it, okay, uh, yeah, what do we do? 
what what do we do with that word uh, what should somebody do with that word you know personal prophecies when it comes to personal prophecies uh, a lot of people have uh, you know because of the use and unfortunately the abuse of spiritual gifts uh, people are quite wary you know, about a prophetic word uh, they are uh, cautious when they hear someone say okay uh, i have a word for you and this is what god is uh, telling you what should be done you know when when one has released that prophetic word so this is the biblical approach you know, we are told in the uh, word of god second chronicles 2020 20 says believe in the lord your god and you shall be established believe his prophets and you shall prosper now Yes, we may have seen people who have not done this well, but that should not stop us from embracing a word that, you know, is coming from God. So when there is a prophetic word, I should be open to receiving it because what does the word say? Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Okay. And again, you know, uh, we see in the book of Thessalonians, it says that don't despise don't despise prophecies. So we are not to uh, close ourselves up to a prophetic word. Instead, our approach should be, okay, uh, fine. You know, this is the word that has come. Now uh, I, I have to test it. Okay? I have to test this word. Uh, you place it before the Lord and then you begin to ask God to uh, minister. And Another good thing that we can do is we can ask God for uh, the wisdom. Now, let's say it's a pro if it's an accurate prophetic word. Now, somebody comes and uh, tells a person, uh, <laughs> that says the Lord, uh, I see you as a minister of the gospel. You are going to different nations uh, and I see that uh, you have established a particular, you know, you've established a ministry, you're leading that ministry. There are many men and women who are part of that ministry. So, you know, this entire prophetic word is given to an individual. Now, as soon as you get this word, what is you test it, okay? You test it and later on we will uh, see how exactly to test this word. So you test it. And after we test that word comes this next question. Uh, what do I do with it? Okay, it's correct. Okay. How do I really apply this? How do I apply this word in my life? So both of these are really crucial. One is, is it really from God? Okay, I will receive what a person is saying. I'm going to receive it and then I'm going to test it. Is it really from God? And yes, when it is correct, uh, I have to apply it. So then I'll have to look for God's wisdom to really apply that word. So if a person has told me all these things about what I'm going to do, does it make sense for me to go and resign? Maybe, you know, I, I'm in a secular job and I just resign my job tomorrow because I've heard this prophecy that God is taking me to the nations and I'm going to uh, uh, be instrumental in starting out this ministry. So, you know, how exactly to do this? Is it correct to even act that fast on a prophetic word? We'll talk about those things. So the first thing, how do you test? How do you test the uh, prophetic word that you hear? Um, we've seen earlier from the book of Deuteronomy, you know, the, uh, the people are told that a word should not draw them away from God. Okay, so that is something we've seen. Now, whenever we get a prophetic word, always ask the question, is it in harmony with the written word of God? Okay, where do I see this in scripture? If not scripture and verse, we can definitely have peace in our, uh, you know, spirit because it, it kind of fits the character of God. It fits the nature of God. You know, it fits uh, what is revealed in God's word. Okay. So that's how uh, the word needs to be tested. So does it fit? Does it fit a particular scripture or does it fit the overall revelation of who God is uh, and you know what he is uh, all about? So I would check that. And if it fits, then great. 
that that word is uh, from god now uh, we would also test it in this manner does this prophecy move me toward god and his will for my life or is it going to just uh, you know take me away from the will of god because what happens is uh, sometimes uh, again this is quite unfortunate uh, people are people are uh, programmed uh, to say words that are a feel good like okay god is i see that god is giving you great success you are going to become very rich everyone would like a word like that you know oh great wonderful or i see that god is giving you an international ministry now having received a word like that i can ask myself okay what does it bring out of me you know does it bring a sense of pride and uh, uh self reliance self dependence where i i think that okay i don't need anyone anyway god is going to make me rich you know or god is going to give me an international ministry uh and i am better than everyone else so is is that prophetic word really leading me towards god or is it just giving me you know some goosebumps and feel good about myself that's also a question we can ask ourselves uh so if we come to the conclusion that a certain prophetic word it's really not uh, leading me closer to god in any way okay so we can then uh, we have an you know we we can reject that word so uh, we apply multiple tests of course to be able to tell that something is from god okay so one we said is it an agreement to god's word that is it leading me towards god or is it just making me proud and uh, self reliant then the next test would be does the spirit bear witness to the prophecy now we know the work of the holy spirit when we are born again we are sensitive to what the spirit is saying you know there are times when we uh we can't explain it but we have that sense isn't it we we say something we uh, uh we put somebody down and immediately more than just our conscience the holy spirit uh, convicts us and says oh you should not have spoken like that or you know you should not have made that uh, person uh, feel bad so the holy spirit is there constantly ministering to our spirit and giving us witness so when a prophetic word comes to us we can pray we can uh, ask the holy spirit to you know give us that sense okay what is it lord you know uh, is this really from you is this good is it aligned to the plans and the purposes that you have for my life so we can ask the holy spirit to minister to our hearts generally uh, at least this is my experience at get go you have an idea that ah uh, okay you know this is this is from god or this not from god because immediately the holy spirit ministers but if you don't have that clarity you can always pray spend time in the presence of god and ask the holy spirit you know lord show me show me give me that peace or the assurance that uh, this word is from you and uh, you know sure enough the holy spirit will uh, bear witness with our spirit and we will know exactly what this is about so you know uh, we might have a sense of uh, peace or on the contrary we might have a sense of unrest okay about a particular matter uh, and so in this manner we have to check the prophetic word out now having done all these tests if you still feel okay i don't have clarity yet hold on you know don't worry there's no need to jump into uh, applying that prophetic word yet you can you can hold on to it till you have clarity that this is really from god okay so one more uh, test that you can apply is is it in harmony with the overall plan and purpose of god for your life now it is possible that uh, let's say god throughout your entire life you know god has called you to uh, minister to a particular region and you know that you know time and again god has spoken to you about it now what if you have a person and your ministry is unfolding in a wonderful way as well and somebody comes and says 
that uh, God is now, uh, you know, God is telling me that you have to leave everything. Okay, leave this ministry. He's calling you to start a new ministry uh, in the islands of Fiji. Okay, it's like just out of the blue, random, uh, and you you don't have any you don't have any uh, uh, reference to what this person is saying. At least through your journey with God. Now, what do you do about a word like that? Now, it could be that the person. Uh, has interpreted it differently. Maybe God is saying that he's opening up an opportunity, uh, uh, you know, a singular opportunity for you to go there and minister for a short period of time. And uh, maybe that's about it. But the way the person has shared this is, okay, stop what you're doing and uh, shift base to Fiji. Okay. Uh, we don't really have to receive it. If we know that excuse me it is not in line with the plan and purpose of god over our lives which god has been uh, speaking to us okay so uh, please give me a moment So yeah, in this uh, way, we can uh, test out and uh, really check, you know, whether something is from God and uh, something is for us. Um, there's a verse in 2 Corinthians 13, 1. Could somebody please read it out for us? 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 1. Yes, ma'am. Second Corinthians 13 chapter, first word. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Susan. So, as you see here, this is, it's, uh, yeah, it, you could call that a part of the test. Um it's more of the confirmation of the prophetic word, you know, in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So if God is saying something generally, uh, you know, the way God works is he, uh, you know, he says the same thing over and over again. He, he tends to say the same thing, maybe in a different way, but He's quite consistent. Okay, so which is why, uh, if there are two confirmations to a prophetic word, then you know we could say that okay, this prophecy is tested. I'm quite clear. I'm quite sure uh, on uh, the fact that this is exactly what God is speaking to me, and we are in a position to actually act on that prophecy. Okay, uh, so it's good to have, uh, you know, two or three witnesses for a certain word. Now, what if we don't have, you know, for whatever reason, let's say we are living far away and there's no proper church in that area. You don't know believer, even if you know believers, they're not, you know, well versed in things like this. So you're holding on to a prophetic word and you're not getting, you know, two or three witnesses for it now how do i how do i go about confirming whether that word is from god you know the test that we spoke about just now we could also rely on excuse me one that is it in line with god's word okay check that's done the second test what is the holy spirit bearing witness with my spirit maybe it's a go ahead you know it's a green signal you say okay check that's done so you have two uh, two, you know, things that tell you that this word is correct. Okay. Now you you might want to act on it, or you might want to wait some more to get you know additional confirmation, additional information from God before you actually do it. But two or three witnesses is what we generally look for. 
and that's why like even uh, in the context of we'll see this later you know prophetic uh, teams where when you have two or three people prophesying together it's generally very helpful because there is an element of uh, you know confirmation that comes in yeah so this is the way in which uh, you know we would uh, find out whether a word is from god and i said the second thing you know how do you apply it uh, one is you have to check whether a word is from god and then you have to see how to apply it remember the example where someone tells us that uh, god is doing all these mighty works of ministry through uh, through our lives so should we act on it now and resign our job so the right thing to do as far as application is concerned is we have to employ uh wisdom okay we have to employ wisdom so uh, i might want to know okay how i see now if god is telling me i am going to get into the ministry how should i get into the ministry and for me to uh, do that in a wise way you know i might have to study god's word more uh, i might have to pray more uh, it's also good for us to have counsel from godly men and women going uh, and speaking to our pastors uh, speaking to people who have been strong in the lord and you know who are well versed in his word so as i'm doing all these things i get an idea of how is it that god wants to unfold this word through my life so uh, it, it's not necessary to act on a prophetic word you know like yesterday but you gain wisdom from god's word and then you uh, we could even plan for it you know so um, there is an element of planning you know, which can be involved in stepping out on the word of god and also you know we will talk about uh, um, the timing okay we i don't i don't think there's uh, sufficient time to go into details but i'll just share this and close for now the timing when is it that god would want us to step into this ministry now uh, it's possible that god reveals many things early on in in our journey with him because he allows us time for preparation now in that time of preparation we can gain knowledge we can gain skill you know we can um uh, have godly connections okay so there are different things that can take place in in that season of preparation and then at the right time you know maybe god gives a person a word and uh, it takes 5 years before that person launches out into the ministry or even 10 years before that person launches out into the ministry so uh, to apply a word that we are hearing from god uh, one is that we check okay is it really from god is it accurate and then the next check is how to apply it you know the wisdom to apply it and also to figure out uh, what is the timing when i am supposed to do this so uh, with that i think i'm just going to pause and if there are any thoughts or any uh, you know insights from your side or questions uh, you could please uh, share that all right so we will uh, if there are no questions then we can uh, wrap up today's session uh, in any case we will be continuing from here so tomorrow again you know we will look at the same topic and if you have any questions you can uh, bring it up then so let's close with a word of prayer um, is anyone uh, comfortable to lead please Okay, how about Abhishek? Abhishek, uh, can you lead us in prayer? Sure, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Holy Father, uh, we come before Holy Presence right in the mighty name of Lord Jesus. I thank you 
uh, for this teaching, the prophetic teaching, that how we judge the prophetic word, Lord, and confirm it, Lord. Thank you for this teaching, wonderful teaching, Lord. Bless Pastor Nancy, give him wisdom, revelation, more use him, Lord, more use her, Lord, in the ministry and the prophetics. And also, Lord, I pray all the students here, Lord, use us also in the prophetic, Lord. Uh, open our spiritual eyes and ears to hear and to see in the realm of the Spirit, Lord. Bless each one of us, Lord, in this classroom, Lord. Thank you for today's teaching, Lord. Uh, we receive that, we believe that, that you really speak to us today also, Lord. Thank you uh, for this teaching, Lord. I pray, thank you for your blessing, thank you for your understanding, Lord. Thank you for your guidance through this teaching to, to the prophetic. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we will meet tomorrow and we will pick thank up you. the next stop. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Thank you, Pastor.